So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to today's presenter, Sherry Weppel. Sherry is the Director of Training and E-Learning Development at CP Strategies and has over 16 years of experience designing, developing, and delivering interactive computer-based and web-based learning modules. Her role is to drive innovative ISD techniques into the processes and provide valuable input on the state of learning and best-in-class practices. Sherry recently completed her MS in Learning Sciences and Technology with a focus in gaming for instruction at Lehigh University. She has also earned an MS in Instructional Design and Development from Lehigh University and a BS in Art Education from Cutstown University. So Sherry, with that, I will turn the session over to you. Thanks so much, Kayla, and thanks everyone for joining us. Feel free as I'm starting to uh, kick off the presentation to keep those ideas coming in. What we really want to talk about today is the fact that there's a, a lot of different possibilities for e-learning and there's you know, some good ways of using e-learning and maybe there's some not so good ways of using e-learning. Uh, e-learning has a tendency to be a quick fix for a lot of people. Uh, you know, if you're in a situation in which you can't have employees travel, for example, a lot of people will then just, well, let's put together some e-learning modules so we can get it out to the masses in a much faster fashion. We don't have to worry about travel and expense. Uh, we have a large population of people to get information across to. Well, we can do that in e-learning and reach a broad audience in a very quick amount of time. What we have a tendency to not do when we think about e-learning is think about really the content that we're looking to convey um, and what we're looking for from an outcome. So e-learning becomes almost this fallback at times of a way of getting information across uh, instead of really being a way to maximize what we're trying to get the learner to, to really gain from a knowledge perspective. So what we're going to do today is on this slide you see a couple of different pictures and we're going to explore a couple of different scenarios um, to see if these particular situations that you might experience or, or you may have other colleagues that experience would be a good solution or would not be a good solution for e-learning. Um, and as we're going through here, if you have additional questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A module. Um, if I'm able to actually answer them during the presentation, I'll try and insert them throughout the presentation. Otherwise, we'll definitely attend to them at the end of the session. So the first button that we're going to click on is interactive procedures. So often we'll have a customer come to us and say, we have this really lengthy, confusing procedure of how can we train our team. So procedures are the bread and butter of a lot of organizations. Call them standard operating procedures, call them workflow procedures, whatever they might be. Uh, you can be in a heavy technical environment. It could be in a human resources type of environment. There's procedures to make sure that everybody gets something completed in the same way, either safely or effectively or with the least amount of error. The problem is, is that the more detail you add to these procedures, the more difficult they become to use. So you may have a procedure, and a lot of times we'll have a company that has a diagram like you can see on the screen where there's decision points, and you know sometimes these diagrams can fill up an entire wall. So I mean, they can be the size of like a whiteboard that you might have hanging on the wall. Well, that becomes really cumbersome for the learner to be able to understand, the learner to be able to get to the, the answer in a quick fashion. And, and then in that case, you have this procedure that really nobody's able to leverage and nobody's able to get the information that they need. So one of the solutions that we have for that is considered e-learning. So it's an e-learning deliverable. You could deliver it on an LMS. You could deliver it on a mobile device. Um, it, it can also be printed out if you really, really like paper that much. Uh, but an interactive PDF is a solution that would allow you to create an interactive procedure. I'm going to show you a little example in a minute, but let's first talk about this screen. because We're going to come upon this screen a couple of different times during the session. So what we basically laid out for you is basic, medium, and advanced for each of these solutions. So there isn't a one-size-fits-all. There isn't a um, top of the line and everything has to be really robust and fancy. Um, there are definitely ranges in which you can develop these different types of learning modalities or e-learning modalities. So when we're talking about a basic interactive PDF, you might have just a menu on the front that branches out to the subsequent pages. So if you have a 90-page procedure, think of it as a table of contents of sorts, but it would have a more graphical appeal to it. So maybe there's questions listed on the front, so it would drive them to the answers to those questions. Um, a medium might have more interactions in it. You might embed some videos in there. Um, you might invent, in, embed some clickable regions inside the interactive PDF to allow them to continue to explore and get their questions answered. 
advanced, you might have a menu on the front. There might be role-based instructions. There might be um, other information that they can click and drive through. So here I'm also giving you kind of what the timeline is as well for how long it takes to create one of these. Uh, types of deliverables. We're going to have a screen like this for each of the different options that we talk about today. So when we talk about um, an interactive PDF, here's an example of what an interactive PDF could look like. So as we look at an interactive PDF, you can see on the left-hand side that there's directions listed up at the top. There's a question that's been listed below that. The learner will click on yes or no, and based on what they click on, they're going to get more information. So you can see that it begins to complete and fill out the examples, or fill out the answers, and then ask continued questions. So instead of having a big diagram that they have to be able to, to kind of follow through and be able to see all the different branches, it allows them with an actual interaction that they can get to to drive to the, the answer that they need. So this is just one of the examples of how you could take a very lengthy procedure and e-learning can actually solve a realistic problem that you have. Another situation that you might be struggling with is large class sizes. So oftentimes, while we know that a class size of 12 to 15 is going to be really the best for instruction, sometimes we don't have that, we just don't have that luxury. You know, we either have large amounts of people that we need to train, uh, we might have um, a short amount of time to be able to train people, or logistically speaking, it is what it is. Um, Typically, we train in a large lecture hall, but people really aren't getting it. How can we train our team? So in that case, that would be a really, a really great case for e-learning. Again, e-learning comes in a bunch of different flavors. You can have a basic e-learning that has really no narration, no interactivity. Um, you know, this is what we often see is the kind of the quick and dirty method of just getting information out. Um, medium might have a single voice. It might have a low level of interactivity. Um, it might have some, some simulations or some videos incorporated in it, whereas the advanced is going to give you something that's more branching, it's going to give you more scenarios. Um, so those are kind of the different flavors of what you might see. Now, as you think about that classroom setting, what makes this a really great case for e-learning is if you're in a large lecture hall, there's really not a lot of dynamics going on between you and the participant. Um, so you have those 100 people or so sitting in the classroom, the person is standing at the front of the room and talking at them. That is a really great example of how if they're just talking at them, then it might be a better solution to have them in front of a computer where you can have them involved and engaged in the content. When you have a lot of role plays or maybe you have a lot of small group instructions, that's where you really need to start to think carefully if that's something that you can replicate in an e-learning environment. That might be something that you might need to turn to a virtual classroom for. Um, it might be something where if part of that instructor-led experience is building those connections and building that collaboration, it might be something that a blended solution might be a better fit for. So you might have the e-learning for that didactic content, but then you might think about social media, you might think about collaboration, you might think about virtual instruction, or even pulling people together because ultimately you want to make sure that you're getting the same outcome even if you switch up the delivery method. So it's really important to keep those things in mind if you're thinking about moving into some sort of an e-learning type deliverable. As we look at an e-learning, I think we're all familiar with what standard e-learning looks like. Uh, you can have videos embedded in it. You can have different scenarios embedded in it. You can have um, a menu at the top and narration and, and all different levels and degrees of interactivity. The key is, is that whatever, if you are getting to the point where you want to move something into an e-learning environment, you should be improving that learning experience. Um, so again, if you're in a, in a structure like classroom where there's a lot of dynamics going around and there's a lot of connections being built and excitement being built, then you should think carefully to make sure that you don't lose any of that in moving it into an e-learning. A lot of times we'll have people who have, you know, three weeks worth of instructor-led training and they want to turn that into three weeks of e-learning or three weeks of e-learning. That's not really improving your situation. Um, so think very carefully about these different options. So let's say that you have a really big piece of equipment and you want to demonstrate how it works, but how can you train the team? So let's say you have a really big piece of equipment or maybe you have something going on like your um, in a packaging field, or you're doing something where you see the outside of the equipment, but you can't see what's going on inside. 
Um, you need to be able to explain what happens inside, but all too often we wind up explaining using diagrams, we wind up explaining using line drawings, and it really doesn't always get that message across. So something that we can think about for that is a form of e-learning, which is using 3D. So 3D doesn't have to be this super, super robust, um, it's going to take you nine to 12 months to be able to get that accomplished and, um, you know, a, a substantial budget as well. 3D is something that you can have very basic. Um, you know, there's some freeware programs out there that you can actually create your own 3D, depending on what you're looking to do. Uh, there's also companies out there that have um, kind of like stock photos, but you can buy stock 3D models, which gets you really, really far along in the process because you're able to just buy equipment. Um, and be able to then animate it yourself. Medium means that you're really customizing some of that, so maybe you're having it in a custom environment. Um, maybe you're trying to recreate an environment that you have in your own organization. And then advanced is where you move more to human interaction, lip syncing, um, custom medical simulations. So there's a lot of different things that um, go into those advanced, and that's where you need to start thinking very carefully on what's going to be better for you, the 3D animation or the video. Um, I did see a question popped up that asked if we could recommend some free th tools for 3D. I absolutely can, and I'll make sure that we include that in the blog. <laughs> so from a 3D animation perspective, this is where, you know, you could have everybody, this is a picture of um, a piece of electronic equipment, you could have everybody in a classroom kind of crowd around this and everybody's trying to look at the switches and everybody's trying to look at the different plugs um, to be able to explain how a process is done, but this is where actually e-learning is going to get you a bigger benefit because everybody's going to get that close-up view. Everybody's going to get to, to see exactly what's happening and this is actually an interactive module where they're given instructions and they need to complete an activity using the, the 3D animated environment. So this is an example of how could you do this in a classroom setting? Yes, um, I've been in a classroom setting where you're all crowded around the server room. It gets very, very warm um, and nobody can really see. But this is a great example of how 3D animation can actually bring all of that to life and have it so much more realistic and so much more relatable for the learner because they're actually in the driver's seat as if they're three inches away. Another thing to think about would be process changes. So a lot of times, you know, we have a small process change due to a new piece of equipment. How can we train our team? Now, this doesn't have to be just equipment related. So think about the different changes that go on in your organization. It could be something like the change to a piece of software. Um, you know, for example, some of you who have logged in with us before may have noticed that WebEx changed a little bit. Um, so it could be a new release that is coming out from your organization software related. It could be a new change from an HR perspective. Um, you know, maybe you have a new performance up, up, appraisal system. It could be any kind of a change from a roles and responsibilities to some sort of a hierarchical change to a new product that's coming to market. Change is hard. Um, when it comes down to it, it's, it's as simple as that change is hard. The hardest part about change sometimes is communication. Um, and what I mean by that is that the best communication makes the change easier. So if you can communicate clearly and early and succinctly and in the right manner, a lot of times your change, whatever you're going to be going through, is going to be a lot easier. One of the, the biggest challenges to communicating any kind of a change is making sure that, number one, everybody who needs to know knows. Number two, that they all know in a reasonable amount of time so that people don't find out in the wrong manner. And number three, that everybody gets a consistent message and knows what they need to know. So one thing to consider from a process change perspective is that e-learning can be a solution for that. Um, a solution from an e-learning perspective would be mobile. Um, so from a mobile standpoint, if you have learners who have mobile devices, and it doesn't have to be a a big rollout or anything like that, this could be something as simple as putting a, a YouTube link in an email. This could be as something as, depending on what your organization's bandwidth is for sending things, you can send short videos to email that they can pull up on the mobile device. But mobile learning is a great way of communicating messages because you can get a, a message out to a broad population who maybe doesn't, doesn't sit in a computer all the time. So if you think about like your sales population, you think about 
Um, if you're in like a telecom community uh, type of an organization, if you have people who are technicians who are on the road, um, it's a really great great way of communicating things because we're all so connected to our phones anymore. But I think I get all of my information through my phone before I ever get it in any other manner. From a mobile standpoint, the same principles basically apply to e-learning, and I wanted to take a brief pause to talk about mobile. Um, so we've had other sessions on mobile, but there's one delineation I want to be able to make. So there's a difference between mobile compliance and mobile learning. Um, a lot of times we're striving for mobile compliance at a bare minimum. And that means that if I happen to be an employee who does not have access to a laptop computer, that I'm able to take the same training, um, I'm able to participate in the same experience through my mobile device. That means that it's not optimal to be viewing it mobily. Um, it just means that I do have that ability to be able to, to still achieve my goals and be able to do what I need to do on that mobile device. Mobile learning is going to be a type of learning that's going to be um, optimal for viewing on a mobile device. So this is where we want to keep things really, really short. Um, from a size perspective, we want to keep things really, really small. Or we want to be on some sort of a streaming server like a YouTube or any of the other video sites that are out there because I think everybody has been in that experience where you're playing a video um, and then it just starts to buffer. And so you're in the middle of getting a message, you're in the middle of getting information, and then all of a sudden it just stops and you're waiting and waiting and <laughs> waiting. And sometimes it continues and sometimes it doesn't. So when we talk about mobile learning, we're talking about short bursts of learning. We're keeping that mobile mindset in mind to make sure that from a bandwidth perspective we're going to do something that um, is going to be achievable for them. And we're really trying to do a consistent message. Um, so from a mobile learning standpoint, you can have your basic mobile learning, which maybe doesn't have audio and doesn't have animation. Um, so maybe it's just like an infographic. Um, an infographic would be an example of mobile learning. Maybe your medium, your medium includes some audio and some animation. Your advanced might include actually like a mobile app. It can include a mini, mini game. Um, so if you would launch out a mini game, they would take the mini game on their, their mobile device and then they'd be able to continue um, and, and get the rest of the message that they're supposed to get. So as we go through and think about that process change, you know, here's an example of something that is not only mobile compliant, but it's also mobile from the standpoint of it's going to be optimal for a mobile learner. So here we have a, it's a very short e-learning module. The text is nice and big and, and the, the white space is really good for the screen. So we're not trying to, to cram a whole bunch of information into a short space. And it's really giving them step-by-step them -step instructions. Now we have the ability to incorporate videos and other things from a mobile learning standpoint. Um, but this is a great way of approaching a, a common problem of how do I communicate change. This could also be done in the form of a video from senior leadership. It could be done in, in a lot of different ways to communicate depending on what your message is. And lastly, what if we have a large piece of equipment that we typically do a walk down with, but we don't have time? So if you have a large piece of equipment, if you have a, maybe you're doing an onboarding and you need to orient somebody to the facility, um, maybe you need to give them kind of a behind the scenes tour of what else is going on in an area where maybe they're restricted from. Maybe you have like an R&D sort of a area that people aren't allowed to go to, but you want all of your employees to be aware of, of what's going on. That's a common problem that a lot of people have. You know, you may want to send people to all of the different regions in which you have offices, but from a travel and expense perspective, that's just not possible. So another thing that we can do from that perspective is video. So video can come in basically three different flavors as well. Video would be something like live video. So that would be where you shoot a video um, and you would be able to present what the video is and, and have an actor or have um, a leader be able to be recorded and, and doing any kind of a demonstration or doing kind of an explanation. There's also infomercials and train commercials. So these would be more of animated videos. Uh, animated videos would have animated graphics, audio, music. Um, but instead of having that one person narrating and that one person on the screen because maybe everybody's not camera ready. Uh, what you can have instead was you could have uh, graphics that would be available. You would have things to support the narration. 
um, but it would really keep it moving. Um, I know a lot of people like to do the talking head. Uh, talking head is great for maybe about 15 seconds, um, and then you're really kind of losing your viewer uh, unless you have something else going on in the background. So an infomercial would be a great way of, of presenting it as a video, um, yet being able to increase the, um, the attention span and increase the engagement of that learner. Trade infomercial is going to be very similar to an infomercial, except it's going to be a lot longer. So we're looking at five to seven minutes, and seven minutes is really pushing it from a video perspective. So if you think about the difference between the two, an infomercial is really doing a communication of a message. So that's more of that change management that we were talking about a little bit earlier, whereas trade infomercial is getting across some, some key pieces of information. So that would be communicating not only a message, but then maybe an action plan or maybe other things that they need to keep in mind and some of the nitty-gritty details of what's involved. Uh, we did have one other question that popped in and asked if the presentation deck would be available. It absolutely will. Um, what we're going to be able to do is include this presentation deck in the blog post when it comes out to your email. So an example would be, you know, let's say you're teaching a, a railroad course on signaling. Um, you know, maybe you can't have the people five inches away from the tracks it's probably going to be a pretty big hazard. Um, so this would be an example of how using video we'd be able to record things and give, give people kind of that, that really close-up view um, without actually putting anybody's safety at risk. Um, there's lots of other cases for video as well. Video also, one thing to remember, is a really great way from a mobile standpoint to communicate. So if you talk about mobile learning, um, deploying a video on a mobile device is actually a really great way of having a really engaging presentation. Um, and that's also the reason why we try and keep those short is for those mobile audiences. So as we go through, there's some key takeaways. Um, so one thing to remember is the function. So are you able to tell the stories the same or better in the new format? So this is a lot of what we talked about from an instructor-led session. If your instructor-led session is really dynamic, a lot of small group instruction, a lot of back and forth, that might not be the best thing for e-learning unless you absolutely have to. You want to be improving the experience. You don't want to be taking anything away from it. So maybe what you can do is remove some of the didactic content, put that into e-learning, and then supplement with virtual, virtual instruction and virtual classroom breakout sessions. You want to think about the form. So can the users access and apply the content in this format. So you want to make sure that you're still communicating the same degree of detail and the same degree of information or better um, if you put it into an e-learning format. And then you also want to make sure that it fits. So, you know, it, it's that square peg round hole philosophy. Of you want to make sure that the format is appropriate for the message. Is it format from a duration perspective, from an imagery perspective, from a messaging perspective? So. If you have a message from your CEO and it's something really important and really mission critical, might not be a really great use for a game. It might be, but it might not be. Um, so think about what you're looking to convey and make sure that it still gets your message across, make sure that it still gets your content across, and make sure it's just a good fit for what you're looking to communicate. So with that, I think we are all ready for some questions. So while I did answer two questions um, so far, if you want to turn to the Q&A module, uh, we can answer any other questions that you have. Great. Thanks, Sherry, for that great presentation. Um, we did go a few minutes over, but if you do have some time to stay on the line, just as a reminder, if you have a question, as Sherry mentioned, um, be sure to enter it into the Q&A module at this time. Um, she covered a lot in only 20 minutes, and since there's still a lot to discuss, we encourage you to continue the conversation with her. Uh, as you can see on the slide right now, there, her contact information is available. Uh, and also, we will be sending a link to everyone with a follow-up blog post where she will be addressing uh, the key takeaways from today, as well as any Q&A that we're not able to get to. Uh, I'd also like to remind everyone that the recording and the slides from today will be emailed to the address that you provided within 48 hours. Uh, so, Sherry, I'll go ahead and let you uh, answer some of these questions that are coming in. Sounds great. So, one of the questions that we had was, can you recommend a software simulation tool for creating trimates? Um, actually, Articulate Storyline has done a really great job uh, with their image capturing tool. So, within Articulate Storyline and Articulate Presenter, they have built in a software simulation component. 
Um, so it allows you to do the recording. It allows you to do the recording once and publish out as a show me or try me um, because I did see the comment on, on Captivate. And the new version of Captivate is a little tricky. Um, so whenever we have a customer who's asking us how to do uh, software simulations, Articulate seems to be the way to go uh, from our standpoint of it's very easy to use. We always want to make sure that it's something that our clients can edit as well. Um, so that seems to be a really good fit. Um, another question was, um, oh, somebody actually asked if we know how to use Storyline. Yes, actually, Storyline is one of our favorite tools to use at this point in time. Um, it's really great from a mobile standpoint as well as a desktop solution. So um, Marie asked if you can explain more options for a blended learning approach. Absolutely can. There are lots of different ways in which you can blend, and really it comes down to that form, fit, and function again. So making sure that whatever you're choosing, whether you're choosing something from instructor-led, if you want somebody to physically be there, make sure that they're getting something out of physically being there. Make sure that they're either building a connection or they're able to ask questions. Um, so think about the situation and what the learner is in and what's going to benefit them the most. Um, one other question is, um, and I only have time for one more, and we'll answer the rest of these in the blog post, I promise. Um, is there such a thing as too much e-learning? Absolutely. Um, all too often, like I had alluded to earlier, um, you know, we'll go from having a three-week instructor-led training to somebody wanting to put three weeks online. That's really not the best approach. You're really not getting any benefit from there. It takes a careful look at your entire curriculum, picking out the pieces that belong in e-learning, picking out the pieces that maybe can be pre-read, um, and then picking out the things that can be virtual or instructor-led or making sure that you still have the hands-on experience that you need to get. Um, with that, I think we are out of time. Um, I will answer all of these questions in the Q&A blog post, which will be coming over to your email. Um, Kayla, do you want to wrap up? I will. Thanks, Sherry. Um, I want to uh, send a special uh, thank you to Sherry Weppel, our presenter for today, and thanks to everyone who attended for your time and attention. We hope that you'll join us again for our next GP Strategies webinar on improving performance by helping good people produce great results. This will be on July 29th. For GP Strategies, I'm Kayla Rotz, and I wish everyone a great day.